Hey there boys and girls, my name is Kyle, better than YouTube says Planecraft, and today we're going to be talking about GPU instancing. As always, if you want to jump around this video, time codes are in the description, and without wasting any more time, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we have to do is actually run some numbers. So I devised a little bit of an experiment to see how great GPU rendering is, if it's actually great at all. Before we get started, let's cover what we'll be running this on. My computer currently has a GeForce GTX 1070. The CPU is running an AMD FX8350 8-core processor, and I have 16 gigs of RAM installed on a 4K monitor. Now this is important because GPU rendering it renders off your GPU, hence the name. So the better the GPU, the better the rendering. If we head over into Unity, we have two empty objects set up, one for CPU and one for GPU. They both have basic spawner scripts. It takes a number of instances, a maximum position for randomly placing the objects, and a prefab. On the GPU side, we have number of objects we want to place, max position, and then we have our mesh and our material. When running the numbers, all I did was enable or disable whatever the game object I was testing at the moment. So now let's actually jump into the numbers. At a whopping 100,000 cubes, the GPU rendering was getting a solid 5 frames a second. Oof, that's it's not off to a good start. But that is actually pretty good compared to the CPU instanced and non-instanced version. We're getting 3.6 and 3. Now when we jump down to 10,000 instances, you'd think the numbers would change drastically. you think 5 for the GPU and 3 for the non-instanced you'd think that number would stay the same, but it doesn't. Actually, at 10,000, GPU only gets 37 frames a second, while CPU instance hits 55, and non-instance hits 49. Things continue to get weirder as we drop down even smaller. At 1,000 instances of our cube, GPU is still at 39, while CPU instance is at 46, and CPU non-instanced is at 48. Now I was staring at these numbers for quite a while, really trying to rack my brain about what the fuck was going on? Why are the numbers not going up so much? And why is GPU struggling so hard? And then I realized this was just in Unity. Unity has a pretty taxing engine to run, and when you're actually viewing the stats, it has to run on those calculations as well. So I decided to do the ultimate test and actually do a build of the game, and then run each build several times, testing out GPU, CPU instanced, and CPU non instanced. These numbers actually tell a different story and a, a much better story, if I'm being honest. At 100,000 cubes in build, our GPU was at 15 frames a second. Our CPU instance was at 2, and our CPU non instance was at 4. That means we gained 10 frames a second for our GPU. Our unsung here is looking pretty good right now. When we drop down to 10,000 cubes in editor, GPU was, was 37 frames a second. In build, it went up to 40 while both CPU instance and non-instanced went from 55 and 49 respectively to 30 and 30. And all the way down at 1,000 instances, GPU went from 39 to 57, while CPUs only got a small boost from 46 and 48 to 50 and 50. Overall across the board, when we look at the numbers, we can see that GPU instancing, when in the build, always beats out of everything else, even if it doesn't look like it's that great when you're just running it in the editor. So now that we know what we need to do, how the fuck do we actually use this thing? And trust me, that's a great question to ask because I spent about 12 hours over the course of 7 days trying to figure out how GPU instancing works. The docs in the wiki are not that great. They show you how to actually set up a surface or a, a subsurface shader for it, but they don't show you how to generate the stuff in scripts. And there are some tutorials online. I found one tutorial where the guy briefly covers it. He doesn't really show too much of the code, he just kind of talks about the idea of it. I found another tutorial where someone gave off some code snippets, but those code snippets were outdated. So after slaving away, tearing my hair out to figure out how this worked, I finally have a tutorial for you guys. I'm going to be in Unity 5.6.3, which is important because some of the stuff isn't going to be available until 5.6.3. For example, on a material, if you want to enable GPU instancing, you need at least 5.6 and up. If you're on 5.5, you can still create your own instance shader by right-clicking, going to Create, Shader, and then they should have an instance version of the standard subsurface shader. If not, you can always try going to the wiki, grabbing the subsurface instance script, creating a new subsurface shader, and then pasting in the script and seeing if it works. Again, I don't know. I know I switched over to 5.6. And I've been loving it. Now that's all over the way, let's move over to phase two and actually writing the code. All right, so in Unity, the first thing we need to do is to actually set up our material. It's pretty easy in 5.6.3 or 5.6 and above. All we're going to do is to create a material. We're going to call it Instanced Mat. For my example, I don't need specular highlight or reflectors, so I'm turning those off. And then we just check the little box that says Enable GPU Instancing. Some people would make you believe it's actually that easy, but they're wrong. Yes, it does help 
with the examples that I showed. However, if you actually adjust the code to spawn things differently, you can actually get a much better result. And that's what we're going to cover next. Let's create an empty object. I'm just going to call it GPU. Make sure it's at 000, and I'm going to right click and create a new script. I'm going to call this spawner. Once it's created, I'll drag it onto our GPU in the component section, and I'll double click the script in order to open it in Visual Studio. All right, once here, let's get our public stuff out of the way. We're going to need three public things. First off, we need a public int called instances. Next up, we need a public vector three called max position. I'm gonna call mine max POS. Then we need a public mesh called object mesh, public material called object material. So in the order of keeping things simple at first, let's actually jump back into Unity and update our script. For instances, I'm gonna pass in 10,000. For our position, I want maximum of 200, 200, and 200. For our mesh, we can actually click this little circle whatever basic shape we want. I want a cube. And for material, we just drag in our material. Back in our script, things are gonna start getting a little complicated, but it's really not too hard if you just follow along. I'm gonna start with the easier functions first. In update, we wanna render our batches. We'll cover our batches pretty soon. For that, we need a private void, which means it returns nothing, and we want render batches. All right, within here, we need a for each loop which means it's gonna loop through for each time something is true. So we want var batch in batches. Now it's gonna complain that we don't have batches, but that's fine, we'll do that later. Now in here is where we actually create, and by create I mean draw our instance of the cube or whatever shape we're passing in. So here we wanna call it graphics.draw mesh instance, and then the parameters we need to pass in our object mesh. We need to pass in any sub mesh indexes, so I pass in zero. Our material, which is object mat, and then it needs a list of matrices to run through. Now these things actually seem pretty scary at first. I knew, I know I was confused on what they did and why they worked and how to work with them, but it's actually not that bad. Basically, all it's doing is it's storing all the important information. You can pretty much think of and Unity, your transform as one of these. You can store your position, your rotation, and your scale. So not only are you storing these three values, but you're then storing these values to x, y, and z. You can store a ton of information, they're actually pretty cool. But for now, all we need to know is we want batch.select, and within these parentheses we want a, create an arrow, a.matrix, Go outside this one, we got to list. Basically what we're doing here is we're going to take our batch and we're gonna convert it over to a list that it can actually work with our draw instance mesh. In order to get rid of this annoying squiggly line in our batches, we're gonna to have to create our list of batches. Now I hope you guys really like list because we're about to put list in list. Yeah, no, crazy, right? What we need is a private list and that list is gonna be made up of a list of an object called object data. We're gonna call this batches. And we're gonna create a new list. Now it's gonna say, what the fuck is object data? That's fine, let's make that. Above our entire class, we're actually gonna create a new class. We write public class, and then we want object data. Now within here, we can declare some public stuff. We want a public vector three called position. I'm gonna call my POS. We need a public vector three called scale. And we need a public quaternion. And if you don't know what quaternion is, basically rotations within Unity. And I'm gonna call that ROT. Now we need a public matrix 4x4. I'm gonna call it matrix. Within that, we're gonna set a get. Basically, it means that we can call matrix and it means we can get the value, but we can't set it from inside another class. It's actually a pretty cool way to protect the stuff that you're working with so that other classes can't fuck with it. And what we wanna do with a get is we need to return our matrix 4x4.trs transform rotation scale. And we're going to pass back our position, our rotation, and our scale. Now, select's going to start having an issue with this, and that's because we're not using some of the namespaces. So we need to pull in using system.linq. Just close that off, and we're good to go. So what we have going on is we have our object data, and this is what we're going to be spawning. We need to be able to track some of these variants if we want to actually manipulate them over time. We won't be doing that in this tutorial, but I will be covering it soon. We have a list of lists called batches, and then we have our render batches, which loops through all our batches and renders it. 
Now, before we go any farther, I'll kind of explain why we have to do what we're doing right now. Basically, there is a limitation to graphics.draw instance meshed. You can't draw over 1,024 objects. And because of the limitation, if we want to draw, like I was doing 100,000 objects, you have to render everything in batches. So I had to create a system in which we batch up all the objects we create to sections of a thousand. It stores these batches in a list of lists called batches, and then we loop through that list, and then we render everything out. It makes a little bit more sense once we have the rest of the scripts. I guess we'll just move on to the start script. Here what we're gonna do is we're gonna set an int called batch index num, and we'll set that equal to zero. Then we need to create a new list, and this is gonna be a list of object data. I'm gonna call this current batch, or C-U-R-R batch. So our batch index number will track us looping through the indexic, will track us looping through our for loop that we're, that we're about to create, and our list cloud data of current batch is gonna be our current batch list, and when we're done, we're gonna inject that into our overall batches list. And we're gonna reset this list back to nothing so we can continue adding more objects to it. So we need a for loop, so we want for int i, equals zero. Well, i is less than instances, we want i plus plus. Now within here, we're gonna run a new function that we'll have to create called add cube. I'm gonna call mine add object. And it's gonna need two things. It's gonna need our current batch and our i. We also wanna make sure our batch number goes up. So on batch index number plus plus. And then we will need to check, is our batch number out of line? So is it past the maximum? So if batch number index is greater than or equal to a thousand, we need to do batches dot add. We're gonna add in our current batch, and then we're gonna do current batch. Current batch is gonna equal build new batch function. We'll write that in a second as well. Before we forget, we should also probably set our batch number to be zero again. So just because it's a little bit easier, let's actually cover our build new batch first. So we want a private, and this time it won't be void because we're actually returning something. What are we returning? We're returning a list of object data, and this is called build new batch. All we're gonna do in here is just return a new list of object data, and that satisfies that. Now let's set up our add object script. This one will be private and void. So there's two things we have to do in here. One is actually add our object to the current batch, and the other is to set its random position. Luckily, its random position is actually pretty easy to set. All we're gonna do is create a new vector three, and I'm just gonna pass in a bunch of random dot ranges between the max POS X and the, ma the negative of the mass POS X. Once we have our position, we can actually add our object. To do that, we just want current batch.add, and we're gonna pass in our new object, and we need a position, new vector three, at whatever scale we want, and our quaternion. However, this is giving some errors. And why is that? Well, because we don't actually have a way to create these objects. We don't have a public function that we can call to actually set this stuff. So what we're gonna do below all this is we're gonna create a public function with the same name as the class name. So um, object data. Now this is gonna take some stuff. First off, we want to take a vector three, we're gonna call it POS. We need to take a vector three, call it scale, and we need a quaternion, and that's gonna be called ROT. Now inside the function, we need this.POS equals POS. This.scale equals scale. And you probably guessed it, this.ROT equals ROT. Now we need to make sure with our function we're actually pulling in a list of object data called current batch and an int called i. Now we're not actually using i for anything, but it's pretty useful if you wanna modify the position based on the loop number. So if you wanna draw straight lines or do some other testing, you need that number if you wanna modify any of this based on what loop or what object that is in your loop of instances. All right, with all this done, we should be good to go. We head back in Unity. Everything's looking pretty good. Let's click play and see what happens. And there we have it. We check out our stats. You can see it's not too great. We're hovering about 40 frames a second, but there's 10,000 instance cubes spawning within a 200 by 200 by 200 cube. These numbers will only go up once you actually build it and run it, but overall it's, it's not too terrible. Based on the endless testing that I did beforehand, you can tell that this is probably one of your best bets if you have to spawn a lot of stuff. However, before I leave you, there is a drawback to this. The object mesh has to be the same mesh. You don't have to use one of these basic primitive objects, but the mesh you're using does have to be the same across all of it. And I believe you're limited to one material. At least I haven't found any examples online of people using multiple materials and actually getting them work. 
without writing custom shaders to adjust specific colors of specific vert vertex. So this might not be a catch-all for you if you're generating a lot of different objects. It might be great to do this in small batches and you can implement that yourself and test it, but if you just want to generate one of the same object over and over again, this is where the powerhouse of the GPU instancing comes in. And well, why is that? Well, basically in a normal game, your, your CPU has to process all the cubes in the scene and then pass those children over to the GPU and the GPU takes in all that information and then renders out your cube. But in GPU batching, we process all that stuff when we generate our cubes and then it says, hey, all these things are similar objects within this batch, so you can actually just reuse the data we've given you minus some of the stuff like the rotation, the scale, and the positioning, but the materials and the model are going to be exactly the same and it, it really cuts down on the render time and it really cuts down on how much your computer has to work. And so by being able to reuse that data, it's actually able to spit out quite a bit of stuff. If you actually want to go to it, you can go to Window, Frame Debugger, Enable it, and you can click through some of this stuff. You can kind of see cubes spawning in as it's running through the different draw calls and the different batches. Pretty cool stuff. I found it pretty helpful. I'm looking forward to using it in new tutorials along with other optimization tips that I have coming up in order to try to make your Unity games not run like dog shit. As always, my name is Kyle. You just learned something cool today, and I'll see you next time. Open eye Through the waves cut through me Hypnotized By the sounds I'm breathing in Hold